Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for making the time to stick with us today on Friday and listen to the Brad Ahead story as it unfolds. I went out for a run this morning uh, looking for some inspiration as to how I might announce this, um, this presentation to you, but unfortunately it was too cold and my mind froze, so I've got no smart-ass remarks to make. I'm just going to talk about Brad Ahead as we go forward. Right place, right time. It's quite likely there'll be some forward-looking statements that I'll make, because I'm tempted to do that quite often. Um, so I obviously seek safe harbour as a consequence of doing that. Right ahead. I'm going to start by just letting you know that we're in America. And I'm sure I'm going to repeat that at least twice or three times at this particular presentation, because America is in many ways the biggest driving force at the moment for its own lithium. I've just come back, the suntan I've got is just because I was down in Miami and I just came back from there yesterday morning and the mega, the, 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 I guess the two themes that I picked up was this. One, if you're in the mining industry, be well aware of ESG and environmental because people are very keen to understand that and you must behave yourself. But secondly, if you're going to be in lithium right now, America wants its own lithium. Of course it will accept Canadian lithium, your good friends, your good relatives, your next door neighbours. It will accept Ghanaian lithium. It will accept lithium from Australia, but it wants its own lithium. The events that have unfolded in the last few months, the DOE putting in $350 million to a lithium project, the General Motors that we heard about there, $750 million to get a project built in America, and you've now got Mr. Biden's uh, inflation uh, Reduction Act, which Mr. Friedland turned into Inflation Creation Act. They are there to give money to companies in America to push the theme of getting lithium for America. So I have no holds barred here when I say we are in America. We have a portfolio of four different projects. One of them is lithium in the clays, which is the biggest players in the, in the industry in America are there. You've got Thacker Pash, you've Lithium America, you've American Lithium and so on, Rhyolite Ridge, big players, big resources, spent a lot more money than we have in Brad Ahead, but we have a bigger footprint. And slowly but surely, we will get there. We will have a big Lithium and Clay project. We've got Lithium in Brains. We are in Nevada, similar to Albemarle. We're only about 50 kilometers away. We've done the geo uh, geotechnical information and the geophysics uh, information, and we know there are water tables in the two projects that should contain brine, and at some stage we'll get around to drill it. And then we've got lithium in the oil brines in the Smackover region of Texas and in Pennsylvania. So we've got those three, but the most important one to me standing up here today is the pegmatites, because you'll have heard this until you're blue in the face, the simple thing about lithium management is go, we, the miners, we're, we're not the brightest guys in the world, make no mistake. We're hard workers, yes, we work under difficult conditions, yes, but we're not the smartest by any stretch of the imagination. And we apply, I'm sure you've all heard of the KISS principle, which is keep it simple, stupid. And so we apply that to our operation in the pegmatites. It is a well-trodden path. Everyone knows how to, how to extract the lithium from the pegmatites, providing it's there, and you produce an intermediate product. That intermediate product then goes for a refining process, and you don't make as much money, but the big thing for a junior, you're getting a process plant for $100 million, plus or minus, and that is affordable for ourselves. So when I say we're in America, make no mistake, that's where we are. I'm not going to talk today, by the way, about the market. You've heard it again until you're fed up hearing it. You know there's a deficit. You know everyone needs it. So why would I emphasize it any more than it's been done already? What I want to talk about are the projects and how we're going to deliver them. That, I think, is key for how Brada progresses in the world we're in. We've got a bunch of crooks, as you can see, uh, leading the, the board, uh, myself included. Been around far too long uh, down at BMO. I did notice a much younger generation, and I wish them good luck uh, and good hunting, as I do for the previous company who came up and delivered their presentation. It was a good presentation. So listen, we are in um, a part of Arizona. Uh, it's called San Domingo. And at San Domingo, we have 23 square kilometers of ground. We started drilling in the pegmatite area historically mined in the 1950s and 60s. So it's there for disturbed ground. We had samples taken, etc. We know there's lithium about, but just how it's located, how, where it's twisted, where it's bent, how it goes, we'd had no clue. But we knew we were behind eight ball, so we started drilling roughly about the middle of the third quarter of last year. And the bane of my life, as it is, I'm sure, for a lot of people sitting in this audience, is assay laboratories. They take forever. Dear God, I'm getting older by the minute, just waiting for assays to come. 12 weeks, 
So if we started, as you can imagine, in October time, roughly, we're getting the assays through at the end of the year. The first press release we put out on the drilling that we did in the San Domingo area, was an area called Midnight Owl, came out in January. And remember, we just went scout drilling, the first program since the 1950s, and we did, or we're about to finish, 7,000 metres. The first 25, the first 25 holes, which is about 50% of our overall drilling, came out and we reported them in the press, and 75% of them were mineralised. Some were better than others, which is no great surprise, but what we did like is we had one particular hallelujah where we got 33 metres at 1.6% Li2O. And that was the first real indication that we were onto something sensible. But because I was waiting for the assays, of course, I disappeared off to another part of the, the mine, and that was called the Central Region. Now, remember, we had gone hell for leather trying to get this drilling company running and get moving in the project, because we want to catch up. There is a window of opportunity, and you've got to be up front in that window of opportunity. But now we're catching up in terms of the typical things we should do as a professional uh, exploration company. We've got to do the soils, we've got to do the trenching, we've got to do the sampling. That is happening, and we've indicated now to ourselves, and hopefully to the market at large, that we've got at least a nine kilometer, possibly even a 13 kilometer trend that is mineralized in spodumene lithium bearing uh, pegmatites. And we got, with SRK's help, SRK are one of the world's largest um, geological companies. We asked them to review it with us, and they insisted, I have to tell you, not us, they insisted we pick up another 10 kilometers square of ground. So we now have 23 square kilometers. But we started elsewhere. We started in the central region because there were four old mines there as well. Now, when I say mines, don't imagine they're big mines. It was 1960s. It was more like a cut, probably about maybe at most eight, eight metres wide and maybe went for about 30, 40 metres in terms of depth. But we had signs that lithium was there. So when we got those first drill holes, we said, let's go down to the central region. We headed down there and we had a second area where visibly, and I emphasise the word visibly, we can see big, pegmat big spodumene crystals in the pegmatites themselves. I haven't got the assays. They'll be out as it happened next week. I can maybe sound here as though I know what I'm talking about and maybe I do feel a little bit comfortable, but there's some good results coming out that gives us the second part of our story in the pegmatites, two out of uh, the hits that we've made. And we've only done uh, up to now 45 holes. That's all that's been done. Very, very um, shallow. Maximum depth is probably, at best, 100 metres. So everything is close to the surface, easy to get to. But remember, these spodumenes tend to come in pods, swarms and pods. So you've got to get a, a decent surface area to get to it. But remember, we're in America. And what does America not have? They don't have any spodumene. They've got plenty of clay, they've got brine, they've got albemarle, but no spodumenes. So MD who wants to be in the American market really should get some spodumene because it is cheap and quick to get into operation. We've got another target down at the bottom, the southern end of it there, um, which is called Morning Star. Funnily enough, the information that we dug out from that came from the 1960s. That's the spodumene uh, material that you can see there in the core shed and from the core itself. But we've got another one, another one called Morning Star, which is this one. It was information that had existed since the 1960s. We found that seven holes had been put in, and of those seven holes, they were able to define the mineralization that existed around them, and you can see that the spodumene is correctly identified. So if in our next phase, and there will be a next phase, and there'll be a phase after that, we'll be drilling down there very quickly because our intention is to deliver a resource here as quickly as we can and get on to metallurgical sampling. Because this, remember when I say I'm not talking about the market, I should also emphasize that being in America, I'm not talking about infrastructure. Because you all know, same as I know, that you go down to America and you've got roads, You've got power. You've actually got water. We found water in our own pro uh, uh, properties in Arizona. You've got people, and you've got a recognized code of operation. So when you look at it by comparison to South America and other parts of the world, it is a nice part to be working in. So the project that we're pushing hard is the lithium in the pegmatites. And I can assure you we will have a resource out in the not too distant future. But we're not a one-trick pony. We also have got 45 square kilometers of a lithium and clays project known as Basin and Wikiup. We do have a 43101 compliant resource there. It is only 500,000 tonnes plus or minus, but we have a royalty on that property only. I should emphasise that the pegmatites is unencumbered in totality, but in the, in the clays we do have a, a royalty, and if, when we reach 1, mil, 1 million tonnes, 
they are very kindly going to give us another two and a half million dollars. So the clay is to some extent, the drilling we're doing in that over the next few months, slow but sure, um, will give us that mil million tonnes, I believe, and it will be paid for by the royalty agreement. So the dilution in ourselves is minimal. Again, that project, is, uh, for those of you, and you will all know here, actually, I'm, going to, I'm talking to a well-educated crowd, permitting in the States is not easy. It just isn't. It's, it's harder than I thought. And I, most of my life, I was spent in Africa, and, and although there's all challenges in Africa, permitting is not one of them. You can normally get to the right guy to get permission and get it stamped, and off you go. But in, in America, lots of diverse groups, lots of political in, infighting, and you, you name it, it happens. And I'm sure Canada's got similar issues as well. So we had to work hard to get ourselves on the ground, get ourselves the right support. We put, in, in actual fact, two web pages together, one for the corporate, but one for the local. So everybody in the local environment of WikiUp in Wickenburg can get onto that web page, send their questions, and then we answer them. So we get that relationship built that's essential no matter where you are in the world and no matter which project you're running. So the second project is this one. We will be drilling again fairly soon, um, and we, the, the drilling should start, in fact, in the second quarter, which is just around the corner in the month of April. And we will build it up sweet and sound, and it will be a good project. So we have lithium and pegmatites, lithium and clays, and then if I go for, and the clays, the, the, there's a couple of slides here which I'm going to just slice over, and it just highlights the size and the, the prospectivity, and, and the, what can I say, it's prospective, you know, that's all there is to it. Um, but we also have lithium and brines, we have done virtually nothing about this. We've had them since the beginning. We know the geophysical work that we've done suggests that there are perch water tables, which hopefully will contain brines. And I actually used to run a brine operation or a brine company in, in, um, in Argentina. Uh, and I should tell you, just in case you're wondering, um, the, the company, I was delighted to sell it in 2019 for roughly about $150 million. If I had had the right pair of cojones, I should have kept a hold of it, because selling it for $150 million in 2019, in 2022, the guys that bought it sell, sold two of the projects in it for a billion dollars. So we know a little bit about brines, and we know a little bit of, of developing them as well. These are potential. They're Albemarle lookalikes. They're about 60 kilometers away from Albemarle, and they need attention. I've got $10 million remaining in my treasury. It's a healthy sum for a junior, but to do a deep hole here, um, I was talking to a colleague who's with us at, right in front of me here, and he, he says, you know, doing a hole that size is a million, million and a half dollars. So you can't do many of them, whereas in the pegmatites, at 100 meters depth, for a million dollars, I can do 25 holes. I can get to that resource. I can get to see where I want to go, development and production. So you can understand why I'm pushing my own case for the pegmatites. But these remain untapped and an opportunity not only for me, but for whoever else may come and talk to us at some stage. An opportunity for funding, an opportunity for developing, et cetera, et cetera. We've got a, an approach for growth. It's pretty clear. I'm not, I'm not going to labor that either. It's we're going to go hell for leather in trying to get this thing moving. I think we do have a great story. I think we've got a real opportunity. America, which is where we are, is good to work in. Um, and they are desperate for lithium. Believe me, they are just biting our hand. Um, the nice thing about it, of course, is the ESG environmental issue, which I kind of touched on at the beginning. The guys that uh, I spoke to in Miami are saying, oh, it's great to have ESG and it's 100% required. But if you don't make money, I don't care if you've got ESG or not. First of all, you've got to make some money here and then I'll become more complicit with the ESG. But the advantage for us, where we are, is that the mega factories, the battery demand, the requirement for the lithium is just across the border, sitting there in California. So I don't have to go for aircraft, for ships, for trains, for trucks, etc. It's a minimal distance. And so when I stand up in front of my peer group and in front of the funds that want to fund this kind of operation, I don't have the ESG challenges they have. I'm ready to go, ready to move across the border. So it's another, if you like, an advantage for this little, com this little company called Brad Ahead. There you can see it. You can see where most of the lithium comes from. You can see how it gets quite challenging. You can have a nice clean operation, but you're still going to have to ship it. And whether you like it or not, you're shipping it via a tanker that's probably going to use diesel in the short term, or you're going to use it by a truck, which uses diesel in the short term, and they're all pretty nasty stuff. So we have got the competitive advantage of being next door to where the end users are. We've got the right products. We've got, I believe, the right team to push this ahead. And we are going, as I said, hell for leather to get the pegmatites up and running as quick as we can. But we still have the money in the bank with the other ones. 
I guess that said, environmental and ESG I've kind of touched on. I'll not labour it any further. And I can see the lights beginning to get close to flashing here. So I think I can just about conclude now and say thank you very much for your attention. And uh, it's great to see so many people here listening to it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.